The US economy has shown once again that a recession is nowhere in sight. The latest GDP numbers came in strong and the labor market is showing no signs of a slowdown. From the top level numbers, it seems the Federal Reserve will pull off their infamous soft landing. In today's video, we're going to look at the latest economic data to see where things stand but we're also going to look at the developments that could lead us into recession over the next 6 to 12 months. Let's get into it. Welcome to Real Estate Watch, the channel that focuses on forward-looking real estate analysis. My name is Eric and I'm a licensed real estate agent and professional economist, so I can provide a unique perspective on real estate and the economy you'll be hard-pressed to find on other YouTube channels. You might be wondering why we're talking about the US economy on a real estate channel, but I assure you they are very connected. The housing market doesn't operate in a vacuum and what happens in the broader economy can significantly impact the housing market. What we're looking for right now are signs of recession which would severely impact housing demand which has the potential to bring down home prices as we are already in a market environment where demand is weak from the surge in mortgage rates which has affected affordability. For the next few months, however, a recession is nowhere in sight and the overall economy is showing considerable strength. The latest data from the Bureau of Economic Analysis showed that U.S. gross domestic product increased at a 3.3% annualized rate in the fourth quarter of 2023. While this was down from the scorching hot increase of 4.9% in the third quarter, we have to go back to the third quarter of 2021 to find an equal rate of growth. It wasn't just the headline GDP number that was great either. All major components posted positive growth, showing strength across the board. Consumer spending, which makes up more than two-thirds of GDP, contributed more than half of the increase to overall growth in the fourth quarter. There just wasn't much in the latest report that showed any kind of weakness for the U.S. economy. Economic data for after the fourth quarter suggests the first quarter of 2024 will be resilient as well. Non-farm payroll employment increased by 353,000 jobs in January, up from the 333,000 jobs in December and was the highest since January 2023. As the labor market continues to add jobs, this will support continued growth in consumer spending, which is the foundation for the U.S. economy. So things are looking good for the U.S. economy for the short term, which means we're not going to see a plummet in housing demand in the next few months that will affect home prices. With mortgage rates starting to come down, we should see a good spring and summer season for the housing market, especially if the Fed signals rate cuts are on their way at their March meeting. Okay, now I'm going to take off my economic cheerleader hat so we can look at some of the risks to the economy that could lead to a recession in the next 6 to 12 months. One of the biggest is the state of the American household balance sheet. A recent survey showed that in 2023, 44% of Americans wouldn't have been able to pay an unexpected $1,000 expense from their savings. This was an increase from the 43% in 2022, showing that the situation isn't getting any better. Another survey found that nearly half of Americans have less than $500 in savings. To make matters worse, credit card delinquency surged in 2023, coming in at 6.4% in the fourth quarter, up sharply from the 4% at the end of 2022. What we're seeing developing for household balance sheets is assets on the decline and debt on the rise leaving the average American household in a vulnerable position. This matters a lot for the overall economy. As I mentioned before, consumer spending makes up more than two-thirds of GDP. In the fourth quarter, that number came in at 68.7%. In terms of contributions to overall growth, consumer spending made up 58% of total growth in the fourth quarter and has averaged 61% of total growth over the last 10 years. Any pullback in consumer spending would be a big blow to economic growth. And if we had a big shock to the economy, we could see a larger than average recession because the U.S. consumer is so vulnerable. Looking out over the next 6 to 12 months, that shock could come from a collapse in the commercial real estate market. Higher interest rates are putting a lot of pressure on commercial real estate loans made 
before the pandemic. A lot of commercial borrowers have to roll over their old loans into new loans, but now they are facing higher borrowing costs than they had in their previous loans. Nearly $1 trillion in commercial loans are coming due in 2024. This is bad news for small regional banks as they hold nearly 70% of all commercial loans. Combine the higher interest rates with declining commercial property values and we have a recipe for a lot of defaults on commercial loans on the horizon. What this means is that we could see a lot of small regional banks becoming insolvent by the end of the year, which could have severe ripple effects in the economy. This could be the match that lights the fires of recession in 2024, and because of the vulnerable U.S. consumer, it wouldn't be a mild recession. Yes, it's possible the government and the Federal Reserve could step in with a major bailout to prevent a severe recession, but that's never guaranteed. Now, what does this mean for the housing market? Even a mild recession would be a big blow to housing demand because of where affordability is right now. The average housing payment as a share of median household income was 42% in December, near record high levels. A recession would mean lost income and ability to purchase a home. We could also see more homeowners listing their homes if they need to cash in on their equity to pay their bills. An increase in supply and fall in demand would result in a significant drop in home prices, somewhere in the 10 to 20% range at the national level. These are developments we will need to keep our eye on. I'll be releasing an update on the economic situation next month, so make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell down below so you won't miss that video when it comes out. And don't forget to hit that like button down below if you enjoyed the content in today's video. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.